hardcore what we were doing. We were camping every single day. We were off in jungles and mountains and deserts, which is really the best part of what we do. We were so far out of our comfort zone. Mm. We were so far from traditional assistance, putting the Land Rover on a ferry on the Amazon River. Oh yeah. Um, and just cruising down the Amazon uh, River for three days. That was, that was mind blowing. When you were camping and everything is caked in mud and it was just, it was terrible and you didn't know if you were gonna get to the end of the road. And then when we got to the end of the road, we were like, Shit, we'd like to do it again. In 2009, we decided we were going to do something different. Uh, our business was very successful, but it was also very stressful. We worked 16 hours a day, five, six days a week. We needed a getaway. And we decided we were going to drive up to Kenya from South Africa, from Cape Town. After six months traveling around East and Southern Africa, we got back home. We'd taken our normal little life, our, our perfect little home, the, the South African version of the American dream that we had always believed that we needed to build. And we'd kind of just sidelined that completely and we threw ourselves into the unknown. You can be anyone you want to be, go anywhere you want to go. It, it's, it's a liberating feeling, absolutely. That was, for me, it was liberating. We sold everything we had, chucked it all in, sold the business, and made the plans to do the drive from Argentina to Alaska. And that's where the name A2A came from. Originally, we were only gonna drive from Argentina to Alaska, and then it just became this monster that took over our lives. Where are we? Ensenada, Mexico. So here, we're in Texas. That's uh, near San Bernardino, California. Flagstaff. Arizona to Prescott, where we are now, Prescott, Arizona. So we're in Sedona. We are in Philadelphia. Why is it every time we do a video, I'm like, I don't even know where I am. Pittsburgh. I have to think about. Yeah, we no, we're not in Philadelphia. We're, no, in Philadelphia. we're far away. We're in, <laughs> we're in Pittsburgh, Tennessee, and um, not Pittsburgh, Tennessee, Pennsylvania. Oh my God. Tennessee, Pennessee. Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pennsylvania. So we're about to leave. Um, fuck. Uh, why do I never know where I am? We are very outdoor people and for us that means campfires, find a beautiful spot where we can really enjoy the outdoors, We're sitting around, making a fire, chopping wood, whatever it takes. There we go. And there's plenty of space for us to do whatever we want to do. However, we've got some noisy neighbours over there so we might go look for another one. But it doesn't look like it. Louise is setting up for some photo shots. <gasps> Who that? Me. Who's me? Jessica. What you want? I'm tiny. We've had to reinvent ourselves from illegal people um, working in the law industry to being creative people. Mm. Um, we've lived on farms which are completely off the grid. We have to learn how to run solar systems and use um, filtered water, to take care of animals. We've had to learn how to become mechanics. We've had to learn so many things and our children learn with us. It's very nice. I'm busy making potato bake and listen to what music they're playing. When we left South Africa, both the children were uh, quite shy. Keelan had been mm -hmm. bullied a lot at school. Jessica was very timid. They have to break down that barrier um, and get their friendship going as soon as possible because there might be a, a time where it's one day in camp 
and they hadn't seen other kids for a couple of weeks. Our culture is South African and everything about us is South African. And we're proudly South African. But you have to look at your future, especially your children's future, and decide where to go from there. Our family is our home now. Where the four of us and the Land Rover are together, we're at home wherever we are. You can take your children out of school and do homeschooling. So it is an easy process in South Africa. We did English and maths and all the other subjects, but we found it to be so difficult to try and keep the kids' attention. When you're sitting on a beach in Peru or, you know, sitting on a beach in Brazil, the last thing a kid wants to do is sit there and study. So we did try and minimize the time that they sent, spent sitting in front of books because we found that they, you know, they could go and explore more and learn more than they could out of the books. Uh, we returned to Brazil because we really loved it. And we landed up in a town, the name was Coqueral. And the kids asked, they're like, hey, can we go to school? I, at first, I was actually a little bit hurt. I'm like, what, you want to spend time with other people? Just, aren't you happy just spending time with me? You know, I was actually quite hurt by it, uh, but I understood. So we went and enrolled them in the schools. And we went and dropped Jessica off at school and a little girl took her hand and off they went. And Keelan, man, he just, he fit in so well. So both of our children really proved that they've grown so much and their confidence is so fantastic. So we are in New York, sighting like normal tourists. <laughs> <laughs> we know that the kids are going to grow up and we know that Keelan has to go and actually, you know, establish himself and, and, and his own life as well. He's clinging on though. I don't think he'll be leaving anytime soon if he has a choice. So <laughs> I think he loves it and we love having our kids around. For me as a mother, I'll find it very, very difficult to actually let him go. Hello, look, it's Keelan. Hello, Keelan. Hello. How are you? Let's see where they can see Fast us. Fast asleep. Go backwards. Go backwards. Backwards. It's, oh, no, it's just sunshine. Ah, ah. Traditional thing in South African home is you turn 18 and that's it. I've, I've said to him, well, you're going to be a man soon. And he has to start contributing. He can work with us. I mean, he's our little IT nerd. I can definitely use him. Not a job or a uh, studies or uh, anything else is really going to tear us apart. It's going to be him falling in love and then later Jessica falling in love. You know, uh, Jessica's, she's only 12. So she still has another at least seven, eight years with us. There she is, hello darling. Hello. So you got teddy bears back here, you got Jones, chocolate chip cookies. Messy. Yeah, I know, I want people to know how messy you are. She's got cards, more toys, toys and more toys, vanity stuff. Vanity. Vanity stuff. Vanity. And then all the little toys with the hearts and stuff. I mean, come on. Yeah, this is a manly ass freaking Defender 130. We don't have space for hearts, little What's girl. What's that? What's a heart? Well, that's different. That's, that's my Norwegian teddy bear. I can see that there will be a period where we might have to stop traveling for a year. I think it's important to experience it, to know that you don't want to have it or you want to have it. I know Jessica will need to go into a mainstream school in order to go to university, or at least, you know, she needs to be in one place just so she can finish her schooling. So I, I want to make sure that my kid's future is taken care of, and then I can go and get a band again. This is how we live our life. And it's not like, oh, I can take that money and I can buy that. It's like, oh, I've got that much money, I can get that much further. And you're listing 29 countries and you can't give a fixed address. And, and you can't give the employment and you can't give that you have any ties back at, back in your home country. And it it's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's yeah. All these little easy. invisible lines in the sand uh, are, are make it extremely difficult for us to get around and just achieve our dreams. But it's frustrating, man. It's like I had misconceptions. I thought that we were going to come into this and it'd just be easy peasy Japanese. We'd be able to organize the visas very quickly. We were able to sort everything out really quickly and get back on the road. And it, it's not working out like that. Everything's taking a lot longer than it should. When we entered the USA, we essentially spent the last of our money to print 200 copies of my first book. And we got We Will Be Freeze and to make success out of that. Start earning mm. 
from our travels and as we travel and to make that our career. That was a great adventure. That was a huge risk. Hello, my name is Daddy. <laughs> and he's writing the book. Another one. But we've written and published two books with uh, wonderful photographs and that's now our profession. I am now an author and she is a photographer. The book. I do vlogs, the video logs, uh, which is essentially me and my Samsung and I stick it up and I talk a lot of crap, but people like it. A while back on our Facebook page I asked what, what people want to see and what, uh, what they want to experience from our Facebook page. And people were saying video, they want to see video. Good morning. We haven't posted a video for a few. Hey, look, Louisa just got out the shower. Does anyone want to see Louisa? No, Graham. Good. But you're like as Mother Nature intends you to be. Uh huh. There it comes. Okay, now. Here are our books. So there's We'll Be Free. Okay. So that's book number one. 329 readable pages um, of who we are, what we're doing, and why we do it. We were surviving on selling books to people we met at gas stations, and the Canadians weren't as generous as the Americans. And here we are in Alaska, we we're really down to our last $20. And I walked in, I saw they were having a book sale at the local library. So I walked in with my kids, and we smelled terrible because we'd been free camping in, in the forest. And I walked up to the director or the, the lady of the library, and I said, I see you having a book fair. Would I be able to sell my book at the book fair? And uh, she looked at me and she goes, well, I won't call the police. What have I done? Yeah. How, what have we done? We, this is insane. I'm, are we crazy? This is so irresponsible. But I think once we had proven that we were capable of doing it and the kids weren't going to die and everything was perfectly fine, then obviously the pride comes in. I'm the optimist and Louise is the pessimist. The realist. The realist. <laughs> but somehow we kind of meet in the middle and we achieve halfway. So if you shoot for the stars and you only reach the moon, at least you're still reaching somewhere. I'm spending uh, the time with the other woman in my life, you know, just hanging out with her. Mafuta means to me love, freedom. We have very few possessions. And she transcends being a possession. It's way more than that. I mean, I could never think of selling her. She's an enabler, you know, she takes care of us as we take care of her. She's a home on wheels. She's everything to me. I love her very much. Is Jessica in there? Say hello, Jessica. Hello. Are you are you happy? Yes. Very uh huh. Mm -hmm. Traitor. Louisa. Yes. Are you gonna be all fancy ass in your Ford Fusion? I am actually. I'm gonna be like, go bitch ass. Check me out. I got a Ford Fusion. It's my one superstition that if I talk about the Land Rover and people say, "How's your Land Rover?" I go, "No, it's fine. Touch wood." Uh, so I rub the wood and I know everything's going to be fine. She won't break down because I touched the wood. It's a little bit crazy. All right, so here's the lady. There she is, all gorgeous. Very nice. We, we completely rebuilt the Land Rover, converted it into a camper um, so that we'd be more comfortable in our future journeys because we'd had enough of living in a roof tent. Four of us had lived in one tent. That can get a bit <laughs> much after a while, I can tell you. Hey. And you know what, after all these years, I'm so sick and tired of eating of a plastic plate. Taking the landy apart. I'm nervous. Like a Lego. Like a Lego. We're going to strip her down to the frame. And so it begins. Sakina's so, my left-handed, right-hand man. He's which gonna, is which needs like some muscle improvement. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty weak right now. Pretty big moment for us. We have to take these raw materials and turn them into a home. And welcome to this edition of Building with the Bells. Yay! What do you think, Louisa? Yeah, it's interesting. What do you mean it's interesting? It's, it's, it's exciting. It is done essentially well it's roadworthy I can drive it to the port uh, the rest of it's going to be done in 
uh, the UK, but there she is. Good morning, then we gotta go get the train that's taking us up to Washington, D.C. The Washington Memorial. We uh, sat on the train for 24 hours. It was very hardcore what we were doing. We were camping every single day. We were off in jungles and mountains and deserts, which is really the best part of what we do. And this is where like house sitting comes in. So we have found ourselves in rural England, very close to the border with Wales. And uh, we're house sitting. There's a private school for kids, which kind of resembles Hogwarts. It's even got like mystical creatures out in the in the fields and that, so we are deep, deep, deep in the English countryside, uh, waiting for the landing. Now, we've got some news. She's on the pond. Um, has she left Florida yet, Lou? Yeah, the, she's in port. She's still in port in Florida. Yesterday, we drove to the port, and ba-da! Look who we have here. Huh. All I know is we're going to a high sitting gig in the very beautiful countryside of Cotswold. Of <laughs> what are we going to do there, Kilo? Um, finish building the Land Rover interior. As you can see, the mess behind my mum. Yes, yes. To be converted into a luxurious interior. It's <laughs> <laughs> a luxurious bachelor party. <laughs> I yes. wish, okay. Yeah, yeah I wish. What, the bachelor party yeah. apartment? Oh. No, I didn't say I didn't say <laughs> So tomorrow we're moving on to our next little part of the world and obviously you're invited to come with us. You can change, you're that you're a different person. You've grown so much, you've seen so much, you believe so much more in yourself. If you had to stand same side by side with the person you were before, you probably wouldn't recognize them. It's, it's just fantastic. We've driven over 150,000 kilometers, five years and raised our children. We've done so much with our lives that it doesn't really scare us. The planet doesn't scare us anymore. Getting from there to there, um, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't put fear in me anymore. It, it's more a challenge of how can I achieve it? There's a lot of places that we still want to explore. Obviously, we have to sell a hell of a lot more books <laughs> and write a bunch more. Anyway, all right. I'm leaving us. Cheers. 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 Cheers.